The views expressed on the following broadcasts do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. One day at a time with its failures and fears With portion of pain and burden of care We must meet Welcome to Walking Through the Language of the Heart, a journey into the grapevine writings of Alcoholics Anonymous co-founder, Bill W. And now, here are your co-hosts, Chris S. and the Monty Man. Well, welcome back, friends and family of uh, the 12-step movement, the recovery community. Uh, Those of you who are... uh, Lovers of the literature, uh, welcome to The Language of the Heart. And uh, this is a program where we talk about the grapevine writings from 1944 to 1970 of uh, Mr. Bill W. and his contribution uh, to the to the grapevine, the uh, AA's uh, meeting in print, and this wonderful book that's been uh, been published called Language of the Heart. On the phone with me is our good friend and co-host for this show, Mr. Chris S. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Monty. How's it going? It's it's going well. Now, we are on Episode 6, Article 6. True? You you know, this is really, really going to be good because this is a historic article. I believe this is the first time that Bill Wilson put all 12 of the traditions together Mm -hmm. and and anyone that's a fan of 12-step recovery uh is usually also a big fan of the traditions the yeah the the suggested points uh for tradition he calls them here which uh were really put together to keep the groups keep the groups solid keep the groups healthy and whole yeah amen so this particular article uh, comes from the April 1946 uh, grapevine, which really it predates the 12 steps and 12 traditions by many years. So I, you know, I believe it's uh, it's the first time he published something mm. that really laid them all out. So uh, I'd like to get started. How about yep. you? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So this is page 20 of my uh, my edition of Language of the Heart. Yep. So. 12 Suggested Points for AA Tradition is the title. Nobody invented Alcoholics Anonymous. It just grew. Trial and error has produced a rich experience. Little by little, we have been adopting the lessons of that experience, first as policy, then as tradition. That process still goes on, and we hope it never stops. Should we ever harden too much, the letter might crush crush the spirit. We could victimize ourselves by petty rules and prohibitions. We could imagine that we had said the last word. We might even be asking alcoholics to accept our rigid ideas or stay away. May we never stifle progress like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, that that's a great paragraph. You know, Bill Wilson really, really was open and wanted the doors of Alcoholics Anonymous to be very wide. Yeah, uh, he he was also very sensitive uh, about you know about considering things rules or laws or uh, or by making membership reliant upon specific uh, dogma or behavior, and. And, you know, I think that was a really, really great attitude to have. He, you know, he wanted, he, he understood that, he understood that alcoholics are 
are a little bit nuts. <laughs> and they come in with every form of prejudice, every form of, of, uh, of emotional, you know, traumatic experience. And he wanted, he wanted it to be a soft landing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are, I mean, the big book alludes to it too. Alcoholics are, are very sensitive people. Uh, we get, man, we get our feathers ruffled pretty easy sometimes. <laughs> and he was sensitive to that. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's, he's saying, yeah, these are suggested points uh, for AA tradition, but he wanted you to know that they were not laws, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I think that's, I think that's a great attitude. You know, I've said uh, a few times, uh, Monty, you, you know, I have that we have more right to break the tradition than any 12 step fellowship has a right to, to punish us for doing so. Right. So, you know, yeah. you know, the pun, the pun, the punishment comes from, you know, we're not, we're not punished. Uh, we're not punished for our sins. We're punished by our sins sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I do. I got a question for you. Um, do you know why the term traditions was uh, decided upon? You know, I don't know his specific thinking about mm-hmm. using that uh, descriptive, but uh, but I think I think as they move forward and as as they found out what worked and what didn't work, it became, I guess, traditional sure. to follow. You know, follow the the best practices. I like to refer to the traditions as best practices. Mm-hmm. You know, we, yeah, we have good. found it a best practice to do, you know, so-and-so. Yeah. So, so anyway, it says, yet the lessons of our experience count for a great deal, a very great deal. We are each convinced. The first written record of AA experience was the book Alcoholics Anonymous. It was addressed to the heart of our foremost problem, the release from the alcohol obsession. It contained personal experiences of drinking and recovery and a statement of those divine but ancient principles which have brought us a miraculous regeneration. Since the publication of Alcoholics Anonymous in 1939, we've grown from 100 to 2,400 members. Seven years have passed, seven years of vast experience with our next great great undertaking, the problem of living and working together. So that's the next great undertaking living and working together as they as they were growing that fast Mm -hmm. this is today our main concern if we can succeed in this adventure and keep succeeding then and only then will our future be secure so you know he was a visionary he he saw problems before they became problems he understood the nature of alcoholics and the nature of the meetings and the nature of all the personalities and, you know, infighting and all that. And, and he, he really, he really understood that something needs to be made traditional uh, that will, that will kind of guide, you know, group operation. Sure. So, you know, that's really what he's what he's talking about here. He says, since personal calamity holds us in bondage no more, our most challenging concern has become the future of Alcoholics Anonymous, how to preserve among us AAs such a powerful unity that neither weakness of persons nor the strain and strife of those troubled times can harm our common cause. We know that Alcoholics Anonymous must continue to live, else save few exceptions, we and our fellow alcoholics throughout the world will surely resume the hopeless journey to oblivion. Mm. So, you know, he, he, he got a chance. He got a front row seat to seeing AA grow from two people to 2,400 people in the, in these years. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can, I can picture, you know, I can picture him, really being really being sensitive and really uh being protective of these crazy groups of alcoholics like like you know we you know we we may have some uh some problems coming at us from the outside but our real threat is going to be on the inside on the inside you, you know bet. how we behave mm-hmm. so let's you know let's Let's figure out how not to 
cause our own problems. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it says uh, almost any AA can tell you what our group problems are. Fundamentally, they have to do with our relations, one with the other and with <laughs> the world outside. They involve relations of the AA to the group, the relation of the group to Alcoholics Anonymous as a whole, and the place of Alcoholics Anonymous in that troubled sea called modern society, where all of humankind must presently shipwreck or find haven. Terribly relevant is the problem of our basic structure and our attitude toward those ever-pressing questions of leadership, money, and authority. The future may well depend on how we feel and act about things that are controversial and how we regard our public relations. Our final destiny will surely hang upon what we presently decide to do with these danger fraught issues. You know, uh, money, uh, you know, power, uh, uh, authority. Th those are those are things that are still problems in groups. Monty, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've, oh. you've seen some of that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, everything from the guy who's been chairing the same meeting for years to weird rules and regulations that a group might put on on how much clean time or sober time you have to have before you can hand out a phone number list. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, it can get pretty interesting. Yeah, and, and you know, there's been, there's been a lot of... Uh, there's been a lot of outside influence that has really impacted, you know, the way groups behave and the philosophy within the groups. And that's come from treatment centers. That's sure. come from, you know, uh, modern, say, let's call it, you know, new age, uh, psychological and mm -hmm. spiritual, uh, stuff. And, uh, and, and, you know, it, it can, it can really divert, uh, the purpose of the group. Uh, and the process of the group away from primary purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that has happened uh, when people try to re rewrite the steps, for instance. Um, usually what I see when I see steps that have been altered, uh, certainly when I see the steps and the only things altered is maybe the topic, the, the topic in step one being alcohol. Uh, you know, we admit we were powerless over life controlling issues, we admit we were powerless over narcotics, whatever, whatever it is. And at the bottom of the of the poster, it'll say um, adapted from and by permission of Alcoholics Anonymous World Service Office. Um, but I, and that's fine. But I've actually I've actually seen on these pieces of paper or handouts where the steps have been altered and it'll say the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm like, no, no, that's not the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. You, if you have, there, there's, for instance, there's a, a 12 steps that are the agnostic 12 steps, for instance. And, okay. you know, uh, the New Age 12 steps. You know, I admitted there was only one power, myself, you know, things like that. And I'll say these are the New Age steps of AA. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they're not. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. You know, another thing is, is, is Alcoholics Anonymous really tries not to go after people right. who are doing crazy things like that. Yeah, they stay you know, out they of really it. really try not to engage in the controversy or the lawsuits or whatever. Right. You know, they, they will sometimes, but they try not to. And, uh, you, you, you know, you you can get you can get well-meaning people and some not not well-meaning people. Sure. Who are going to, you know, who are going to uh, bastardize um, the, you know, the processes and and the procedures in Alcoholics Anonymous to 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 meet their own specific ends. And, uh, you, you know, that that's almost never good. Right. Right. And I think that's why it is, you know, again, why it is so vitally important to have sponsors in Alcoholics Anonymous that know some of the history. They know some of the background. You know, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about the ABCs, you know, in, in how it works. Right. Uh, the three pertinent ideas. Well, you can't really know what those are 
unless you you know if one of the pertinent ideas is is about alcohol well you got to you got to read the doctor's opinion and more about alcoholism uh our, yeah. our you know the personal experiences we well, got to read the stories in the back you you in yeah. order to really be able to understand the abc's you need to read more than how it works to really understand how it works, you need to meet, you need to read more than that chapter. And to really understand the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it is very healthy. And I encourage people to read more of the history. And I think that's why we love doing what we do at Take 12 Recovery Radio. Because we, we dig into this stuff. And some of this stuff, I, I have a co-host on my, on my Take 12 Recovery Radio show that says, you know what, Monty? I never knew, I was never privy to the history of Alcoholics Anonymous until four years after being in the program. Wow. That's crazy, I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's, it is important. And, I, and, I, and you, also mentioned, uh, you also mentioned that it's, it's, you know, you don't want to jump around in, in the book right, right, right away. It's a textbook. Like, like imagine, imagine if you had... Uh, a math textbook and yeah. chapter five was calculus and and you show up in the math class and they say here's your book you know go to chapter five that's how we do this stuff sure and you go right to calculus without going to algebra or basic math you're not going to understand you're not going to understand that's right. the, the 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 con and in context and it, it really is the same way with the book alcoholics anonymous it's, mm -hmm. it, it should be approached like a textbook and and each page gives you information and prepares you for the next page. You yeah, know? yeah. And I think that I mean we even did, when we did walking through the big book series, we started with the dust jacket, and then we yeah. went then we went to the introduction in the first edition. You know, and, yeah. And, and, sure, and I remember that. That stuff is important. If you skip that stuff, you really miss out. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So now comes the crux of our discussion. It is this. Have we yet acquired sufficient experience to state clear-cut policies on these, our chief concerns? Money, power, prestige, right? Yeah. Can we, now, can, we, can we now declare general principles which could grow into vital traditions, traditions sustained in the heart of each AA by his own deep conviction and by the common consent of his fellows? That is the question. Though full answers to all our perplexities may never be found, I'm sure we have come at least to a vantage point once we can discern the main outlines of a body of tradition, which, God willing, can stand as an effective guard against all the ravages of time and circumstance. Hmm. What a wonderful, what a wonderful paragraph! Now, re remember, these haven't been adopted yet. Yeah, this, this is the first. This is the first time he's he's writing these. They they became adopted. I you know I believe at the the 1950 Al Alcoholics Anonymous convention or so, some, something like that. And, yeah, uh, you know they they became adopted by AA as as uh, the 12 traditions, just like the 12 steps were, you know? So uh, it says acting upon the persistent urge of old AA friends and upon the conviction that general agreement and consent between our members is now possible. I shall venture to place in words, these suggestions for an Alcoholics Anonymous tradition of relations, 12 points to assure our future. And that's not how we we uh, we refer to them today. Mm -hmm. We just call them the 12 traditions mm -hmm. because they've become so you know, they've, they've become so accepted. Yeah, but I like I like what he says here. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous tradition of relations dash 12 points to assure our future. Wow. That, that's a really interesting way to, uh, you know, to describe them. Yeah. So here we go. We're about to uh, go through them. Our AA experience has taught us that, number one, each member of Alcoholics Anonymous is but a small part of a great whole. AA must continue to live or most of us will surely die. Hence, our common welfare comes first. But individual welfare follows close afterward. Wow. So, so that's a problem statement. So he's summing up, he's summing up the situation uh, that needs to be protected, the, the, uh, the goal of the traditions. 
And what that is, is unity, you know, uh, safe unity mm. for the fellowship. We must stick together. We must find ways to stick together. So this is the problem statement. And, and how we solve that problem are going to be the following, uh, the following points to assure our future. So number two, for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he may express himself in group conscience. Now, now Monty, I need to tell you that um, it was a while uh, before I really adopted this. And let, let me let me just kind of give you um, give you a, 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 an explanation of what I mean by that. Sure. All right. So I started a home group in 1997. And this home group became, you know, really, it became pretty big and certainly influential. It was, uh, it was different than any of the other groups in, in, in our area at that time. It was a presentation meeting of the steps out of the book, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And, uh, and, a, and a power driver came in. You know, we, we've all seen these power drivers. They're, you know, they, 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 they have... Uh, Enormous egos. Uh, they are uh, control freaks. Mm -hmm. uh, they really believe that their perspective on whatever they're perceiving is the correct one, and they need to educate all of us <laughs> yeah. so that we believe like they do. You know, because obviously they're right. They're right. Yep. And this and this individual started calling group consciousness and really started screwing up the meeting. Now, now at least that was my perception. OK, like like he's make he wants all these changes being made. And I'm not really sure that those changes are applicable for this particular group. They don't really make sense for this group. This group is autonomous and it's different. And I started to panic and I started to get all of the people I sponsored and all my friends together and show up at the group conch meeting, conscious meetings to vote this guy down. He needed to be voted down, Monty. Now, <laughs> now, this just shows how this this just shows my lack of faith in uh, in in uh, my my lack of faith where uh, God will express Himself through the group conscience mm -hmm. and not through Chris's Chris's conscience, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, I and do so, exactly know what you so mean. So it wasn't yeah. many years after that. I mean, that was a very painful experience for me. It wasn't very many years after that 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 I, you know, I was I just considered myself one vote, and, and if it, and if the vote doesn't go my way, it, it, it's going the right way. You, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like I started to really have faith in the group conscience. I, I I totally get that, and, and I'm I, I'm reflecting on when uh, smoking became illegal in the state of Oregon in public places, and of course you know I mean we many of us were around when you could smoke in a meeting, sure when all meetings you could smoke in they didn't have smoking meetings and non-smoking meetings they were just meetings right um, yeah. And if you didn't like the smoke, you could stand up, go outside, and take a fresh air break. I mean, that's kind of the way it was. Um, and oh my gosh, the right fighters that came out of the woodwork. And <clears throat> you know, uh, here is the law. Do we have to obey the? We don't have to obey the law. We have our own laws. And I mean, just all sorts of stuff. And I remember getting my feathers ruffled, and my sponsor just said, "Monty, you got to just trust the process." It'll work out or it won't. <laughs> he said, it'll work out or it won't. What are you going to do with that? And you know what? It did work out. It's I have I have the same experience. I, there were almost fist fights. Yeah. That, that I saw. And I remember one group <laughs> voting voting out smoking because the church's insurance company was not allowing it anymore, right? Right. And, and these guys came in and sat in the front row and smoked just to be, you know, just to be <laughs> obstinate about it. It, it. it was it was a crazy time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, here's a, here's my take on this thing because I've got I've got some right fighter, you know, I'm going to pick on my Christian brothers that, 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 that go to the meeting, um, that just, they, there are these pile drivers, right? And I just, I get embarrassed for them when they start to talk and I think, oh God, 
shut their mouths, please. I mean, you know, and um, one, one of the things that I really learned was if I truly believe that my God is God, then who am I to think that he doesn't have this under control? He's doing just fine. He doesn't need my bony finger pointing at people saying, well, that's that's ridiculous. He just doesn't. He'll work through the process of the thing, and it'll work out. And it always does. You know, so the best, I like to quote Dr. Phil McGraw here, the best predictor of future behavior is relevant past behavior. God has always come through, regardless of my interference or my lack of it or whatever. So if I'm trusting the process, if I'm trusting the group conscience, I am trusting God. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I totally feel that same. I, you know, that's part of, I think, maturing into yes. recovery. Yeah. You know, that, that shift in perspective like that. Yeah. Okay. So number, number three, our membership ought to include all who suffer from alcoholism. Hence we may refuse none who wish to recover. Nor ought AA membership ever depend on money or conformity. Any two or three alcoholics gathered together for sobriety may call themselves an AA group. Now, you know, that that kind of defines uh, the people who could and should be members mm-hmm. in, a, in an Alcoholics Anonymous group. Now, you know, we, we, we're in a different age today, okay? In, in, in the 40s, you know, there was most of the people who came in were alcoholics, right? Sure. <laughs> but yeah. but in, this, in this day and age, there's so much opiates. There's, there's so much cocaine and crack. There's, there's so many benzos. There's so many prescription pads, right? Yeah. That, that people come in and, and they're, you know, they're, they, they got multiple, multiple problems. Yes. Uh, you know, I still believe, I still believe that, that Alcoholics Anonymous works for, people who are alcoholic now you can be alcoholic in anything else but i haven't se- i haven't really seen it work if you don't have at least an alcohol problem you know mm. what i mean like 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 alcohol has got to be part of that picture alcohol has got to be causing you some real pain mm. for AA to work and and, and you know there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of controversy about this tradition. You know, some people yeah. feel like a drug is a drug is a drug, and then some people feel no, 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 uh, singleness of purpose, singleness of purpose. So, you, so you have that, you have that, uh, uh, y- you know, y- y- you have that disparity in in opinion. And you know where I fall on where I fall on it is is I'm never going to be the guy who polices, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like whether someone is really an alcoholic or not, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, but, but I think, I think it works with alcoholics and I've seen it not work with people who aren't, you know? So, so this, this tradition, you know, this tradition I think is important. So, so my, my take on that is, is if alcohol, if the abuse of and the damage it does and the ravages of it, if that is the symptom and what really going on what's fueling that is is a spiritual you know starvation if you will spiritual need um and alcohol is a symptom then cannot uh the program of alcoholics anonymous work for people that aren't alcoholic and my answer i answer my own question to that because i too i what i've actually seen with my eyes though tells me kind of what you're saying um and I wonder if that's because those of us who are alcoholic, because of the symptom, because of the terminology, we become willing. I mean, we see it in ourselves and we become willing to be open to the principles and the spiritual disciplines in the steps. Whereas if I'm not alcoholic, I've got some reservations. If I'm coming into an AA meeting and I, and I just struggle with cannabis, I may be sitting back picking apart those steps because I can't identify. And, and, you know, so I think they can work for anybody, but I don't know. I'm kind of with you. I haven't seen it go that way. So, so, you know, I've seen the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous work for anyone. Sure. Uh, I've I've seen that as you have. Uh, 
but you but you go to you go back to the principle of a common problem. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, let's say there's 15 alcoholics in an AA meeting and a crack addict walks walks in. Right. That that crack addict is not going to identify with the alcoholics. He may he may think that there's an answer there. He may he may have been pointed to the meetings by a well-meaning professional or whatever, but he's never going to feel like this is exactly where I should be. Yeah. I am like these people. So that so that that com that commons that common problem the you know being able to identify is important and that's why there's there's cocaine anonymous there's narcotics anonymous heroin anonymous is big uh drug addicts anonymous they're, sure. they're all they're, they're all programs that started up that understand that uh in step one you're you know you're you're powerless over a specific thing and you identify with other people who have similar you know powerless experience and you carry the message to people in step 12. You carry the message to people who have a similar uh, experience as yours because you're more effective if you're carrying a message, you know, when yeah. you have a similar yeah. experience with someone. So yeah. that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, you, know? you, feel, you feel more like you're at your home, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, these absolutely. Guys, these guys know how I feel. They did what I did. Yeah. And they're all clean now or they're all sober now, you know? Right. I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. But, but you know, uh, and, 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 and another thing, you know, this is a program that demands rigorous honesty. And so if you come into uh, an AA room and you raise your hand and, and, and you, you say you're an alcoholic when really you're a crack addict, you're starting off a spiritual process with, uh, with, with a, a lie. lie. <laughs> and yeah. and that and that's going to be corrosive. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. That's you bet. Be corrosive. Yep. So so anyway, okay. Number four, uh, with respect to its own affairs, each AA group should be responsible to no other authority than its own conscience. But when it plans con, uh, when its plans concern the welfare of neighboring groups, also those groups ought to be consulted. And no group, regional committee, or individual should ever take any action that might greatly affect AA as a whole without conferring with the trustees of the Alcoholic Foundation, which is now the General Service Board. On such issues, our common welfare is paramount. Now, 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 you know, a, a, this is this is actually something that I violated, and I, I, I want to I want to tell the story of how I how I broke this tradition. Oh, right. good. When I, I told you I started a group in 1997. Yeah. What, what, what I didn't tell you is there was a group right down the street at the same time on the same night. Now, you could you could really make a case, and a few people did. You could really make a case that I'm affecting other AA groups. You know, mm. I'm, I'm I'm starting a meeting that's just you know three blocks away from a meeting that already exists at the same time on the same night. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. I, and, and I didn't even think of it. Money, I didn't even consider the people right. down the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and listen, it ended up working out because the people that went to our group were uh, were like a, a different, you know, a different mix of people than the people that were going down the street. Uh, but but I but I understood, uh, you know, I understood later on that, you know, that group really should have been, uh, sh- you know, should have been. Uh, uh, consulted mm. uh, prior to me starting that meeting they probably would have said yeah go ahead do a big book meeting we're not coming you know right but uh but uh now as far as doing something that's going to affect aa as a whole and then contacting new york's general service i've never heard of that <laughs> happening and, you know I, I i don't think general service would respond if you asked them <laughs> you know what i mean it's, it's such a big organization now right so but 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 anyway that, that's an interesting tradition yeah yeah uh, i love number it. number five each alcoholics anonymous group ought to be a spiritual entity having but one primary purpose that of carrying its message to the alcoholic who still suffers. So this is a, this is where you get signalness of purpose. You get primary purpose, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. One alcoholic working with another alcoholic, and that I believe is the thing that is magical about Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, we can help. We can help when uh, when 
other people can. You know, it's it's really funny. You'll you'll get somebody who comes into uh, an AA meeting, and they've had they've had psychiatry treatment, you know, for fifteen years. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, they've joined the gym. They, you know, they've they've <laughs> done everything that you can possibly do. You know, they've gone to psychologists and doctors and ministers and everybody. And they walk into an AA meeting and a plumber named Larry is the person that guides them to recovery. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, that, like uh, that, that's I great. Just, uh, I think that's, I think that's cool. I think that's special. I, I, th- uh, I think uh, having this primary purpose also, also can serve to solve a lot of issues, right? I mean, you know, I remember when I was the right fighter and I had learned about the traditions and I was going up to this little this little Girl Scout hut where we had an AA meeting and they just weren't doing things the way the tradition said. And I, well, I was going to straighten those guys out. Right. And yeah. and my sponsor lived up there and he said, you know, before you open your mouth, you might want to consider <laughs> the primary purpose here. Is this going to be helpful? Is this going to help the alcoholic who still suffers? Are you just, you know, being a right fighter? And that stopped me dead in my tracks. But I still carried that attitude for a long time in, until, you know, really I understood what my sponsor would say. Hey, you know, these traditions are written in jello, Monty, and they should never be broken. But if they're so rigid, they're going to snap in two. And so you've got to be flexible. And that was a lesson. That was a hard lesson to learn because I had, you know, I was right, of course. You, you, you know, this happens a lot when people move, you know, like if I moved out to Oregon, I, I, I'd be I'd be saying, hey, you guys in Oregon are doing it wrong. You know, we do right. it right back in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. You that bet. Kind of stuff goes on all the time. <laughs> all right. Tradition six problems of money, property and authority may easily divert us from our primary spiritual aim. Mm. We think, therefore, that any considerable property of genuine use to AA should be separately incorporated and managed, thus dividing the material from the spiritual. An AA group as such should never go into business. Secondary aids to AA, such as clubs or hospitals, which require much property or administration, ought to be so set apart if necessary that they can be freely discarded by the groups. The management of these special facilities should be the sole responsibility of those people, whether AAs or not, who financially support them. For our clubs, we prefer AA managers, but hospitals, as well as other places of recuperation, ought to be well outside AA and medically supervised. An AA group may cooperate with anyone, but should bind itself to no one. So this is something that is mostly followed today. There's clubhouses everywhere. Mm -hmm. In New Jersey, in New Jersey, you know, cost of square footage is just prohibitive for clubhouses. There's only a handful, but there's area in the areas in the country where that's where AA is. AA is 24 seven in the clubhouses. Yeah. And those clubhouses, almost, almost every one of them is separately incorporated outside of Alcoholics Anonymous and they're run by a board, you know, and the AA meetings can freely discard them. They can move right down the street without any problem. They right. can pick up their coffee pot and go, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and I think that's, I think that's a good tradition too. Now that doesn't mean that a board member couldn't also be an AA member, right? Oh, sure they could. Sure. Yeah, sure they could. But if they can't separate the two, when the time comes to do that, that might be an issue. Yeah. 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 So number seven, the AA groups themselves ought to be fully supported by the voluntary contributions of their own members. We think that each AA group should soon achieve this ideal that any public solicitation of funds using the name of Alcoholics Anonymous is highly dangerous. That acceptance of large gifts from any source or of contributions carrying any obligation, whatever, is usually unwise. Then, too, we view with much concern those AA treasuries, which continue beyond prudent reserves to accumulate funds for no stated AA purpose. Yeah. Experience has often warned us that nothing can so surely destroy our spiritual heritage as feudal disputes over property, money, and authority. And this, this really became something that we paid a lot of attention to. A couple of examples. Uh, let, let's say Uncle Harry dies, and he was an AA member. It saved his life. He was sober 30 years. And he leaves in his will a million dollars 
to the general service uh, uh, organization of Alcoholics Anonymous in mm-hmm. New York. Uh, so a check all of a sudden goes to general service from 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 Uncle Harry, right? Yeah. You know what general service? You know what general service does? Right. It returns it. Mm. It returns it. You know that's become that's become the policy, and I think that's I think that's really. Uh, you know, really good. Another another issue is now different people have different thoughts on this, but uh, a prudent reserve is usually six months or three months of operational expenses. Yes. So yeah. so let's let's say your treasury. Let, let's say your operational expenses are two hundred dollars a month for a group. You know, you should have you should have six to twelve hundred dollars in your treasury as a as a prudent reserve. Mm-hmm. Most people operate under that. You know, most yeah. most people have a little bit more faith in God and even under even operate underneath that. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, that's that's proved wise because so many fights happen over money. You know, hey, we've got. I remember I remember what happened in, in one of our groups. You know, the treasury had gotten pretty large, and one of our group members died. And the the treasurer made an announcement saying, "We're you know we're going to give money." Uh, to the Heart Association in uh, you know in memory of uh, Bill N. And and we had you know we had to raise our hand and say you you, you can't do that yeah you, you know listen it's a wonderful thing it's it's great that you're thinking of doing that and and certainly this this group owes you know a, a debt to Bill N he was such a great member but we can't take our treasury money and give it to the Heart Association. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. That's you know a line I mean? you, you can't cross. I, you know, I've seen this happen with uh, people at my own home group uh, who have been faithful members for years and years, sponsored so many people and so forth, and they pass away and their family, who has no association with Alcoholics Anonymous whatsoever, um, it doesn't have the money to pay for the medical costs or the funeral or any of that. And a vote will come up in a business meeting. Should we use the? You know, we've got some money here. Should we use this to to help pay for the funeral expenses? And um, what I've seen was the answer was no. Yeah, uh, the and, answer is no. Uh, you, yeah. you can pass a separate hat. Yes, uh, I mean you, you can pass a hat outside of outside the of the business. meeting. Yeah, you, know you can I mean? do that. But as soon as you do that, as well meaning as that is, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, um, number eight. Alcoholics Anonymous should remain forever non-professional. We define professionalism as the occupation of counseling alcoholics for fee or hire. But we may employ alcoholics where they're going to perform those full-time services for which we might otherwise have to engage non-alcoholics. Such special services may be well uh, uh, recompensed, but personal 12-step work is never to be paid for. Mm -hmm. And this is an important tradition. What, you know, there were there were drying out farms back in the forties, okay, yeah. and and uh, and alcoholics, you know that that worked there wanted to get paid, and so so they came they came up with this tradition like if you're going to have counselors or you're going to have you know professional uh, uh, people that are working in these businesses, uh, yeah, they can be alcoholics and, and they can get they can get paid. But our 12-step work, you know, our Mm -hmm. sponsorship work, Mm -hmm. our work taking other people through the steps can never can never be charged for. That's right. And, 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 you know, there's some gray area in this today because there's a lot of recovery centers that are about the business of taking you through the 12 steps. Uh, And 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 and. Believe me, I support that. Now mm-hmm. that that may go at odds with this particular tradition, but but I've seen a lot of lives saved by places that are are twelve step immersion yes. programs. You know, and and the people that are are counselors in there are AA members in good standing who are getting paid. You know, to be teaching uh, teaching people uh, a spiritual way of life that's going to uh, result in a recovery. So, you know, there's some there's some gray area in this, you know, and uh, I think uh, I think it should be looked at a little bit more deeply by, mm. you know, whoever mm-hmm. whoever looks at these things. Right? Yeah, right. So so uh, number nine, each AA group needs the least possible organization. Rotating leadership is usually the best. Yes. 
The small group may elect its secretary, the large group its rotating committee, and the groups of a large metropolitan area their central committee, which often employs a full-time secretary. The trustees of the Alcoholic Foundation are, in effect, our general service committee. They are the custodians of our AA tradition and the receivers of voluntary AA contributions by which they maintain AA general headquarters and our general secretary at New York. They are authorized by the groups to handle our overall public relations, and they guarantee the integrity of our principal publication, the AA Grapevine. All such representatives are to be guided in the spirit of service, for true leaders in AA are but trusted and experienced servants of the whole. They derive no real authority from their titles. Universal respect is a key to their usefulness. So what he's saying here is, is you know, the larger the the, the groups broke up uh, early on into uh, into districts and then areas. Mm-hmm. So so there's a, a bunch of districts in New Jersey, and it's basically Area 44. Right. Yeah. Now, now they have a headquarters and they have people that answer the phone and, you know, some of them are volunteers. Right. But, you know, you can't expect volunteers to do the janitorial work. You can't expect them to do the secretarial work or the accounting work. So so those people are uh, are 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 paid paid, Mm -hmm. and they should be. Yeah. You know, Um, and I like I like that no one has authority. That there there are no leaders there, are but trusted servants. You know, I, I I love that. I love that because a lot of times there's a power driving, you know, ego, yeah. and the, someone quickly wants to become, you know, the president of AA so that they can, <laughs> you know, exert their uh, their wonderful influence and perspective on people. And they find, much to their chagrin, that that's really not how this works. Uh, a spiritual uh, uh, principle is the principle of rotation. <laughs> so yeah. you ain't going to be there very long. You sometimes, you know what I mean? sometimes those power drivers, though, they can get a bit of a following going after them. Uh, you know, and then, then sometimes you have a new meeting spring up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Number 10, no AA group or member should ever in such a way as to implicate AA express any opinion on outside controversial issues, particularly those of politics, alcohol reform, or sectarian religion. The Alcoholics Anonymous group suppose no one concerning such matters. They can express no what no views whatsoever. You know, I'll just use this as an example, Monty. Mm-hmm. You know, when I you know, when I'm within this 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 twelve step fellowship. I really try not to express uh, uh, a lot of my personal opinions. Like you probably wouldn't know. You've known me for years. You probably wouldn't know if I was a Democrat or a Republican. You probably wouldn't know if I was a Methodist or a Catholic. Sure. You you probably wouldn't know, would know if I went to church or not. You you know you you probably would not know a lot of these things, and and that's as it should be because. You know, we we need we need to separate from anything that's going to separate us. <laughs> we need to yeah. separate from separation. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I I I think yeah. I I think when when a person is um boy engulfed in in whatever it is that they're passionate about politically, faith based wise. Uh, and everything else in between, I think the the values and and the positive attributes of that, I think they show anyway. I don't think you have to wear a badge. You know what I mean? Uh, right. You just don't. You just you know. Hey, what do you think when you hear this guy's name? You know what I think? I think of the word integrity. Do you know? Do you know what church he goes to? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It, you know, a primary purpose. You yeah. know, we're rolling back to primary. Our primary purpose is, you know, sure. what are we here for? Sure. You know, we're here to help others, other people recover from alcoholism. Anything yeah. that gets in that way, in the way of that, you know, is not good. Yeah. Yeah. That's All good. Right, number 11. Our relations with the outside world should be characterized by modesty, modesty and anonymity. We think AA ought to avoid sensational advertising. Our public relations should be guided by the principle of attraction rather than promotion. There is never need to praise ourselves. 
we feel it better to let our friends recommend us. You know, so so mo- modesty and humility that that is something that Bill Wilson recognized almost immediately. That was essential, you know, and uh, 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 anonymity with the outside world, a- anonymity in press, radio, TV, and film is really what this developed into. Mm-hmm. So, and that's a good thing because because people can relapse, right? And 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 all of a sudden, if you're you know letting everybody know, you know, on TV that you've just joined Alcoholics Anonymous and you start drinking again. What you do is you give Alcoholics Anonymous a black eye. And, 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 you know, that, that's, that's like really not a good thing to do. The guy in Texas who keeps track of, uh, uh, of celebrities who break their anonymity. Oh, yeah. Like you told yeah. Okay. And he found that, like, something like 97% of the ce- celebrities that break their anonymity drink again. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's also bad karma to do it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know? it's like, it's like wearing your AA World Service Convention t shirt while you're going out to the nightclub. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, come it on. <laughs> Number 12. And finally, we have Alcoholics Anonymous. I believe that the principle of anonymity has an immense spiritual significance. It reminds us that we are to place our principles before personality, that we are actually to practice a true, humble modesty. He started to call that humility later. To this end, uh, that, that, uh, this to the end, that our great blessings may never spoil us, that we shall forever live in a thankful contemplation of him who presides over us all. You know that is that's beautiful. That mm. is really a beautiful uh, uh, couple of sentences. May it be urged that while these principles have been stated in rather positive language, language, they are still only suggestions for our future. We of Alcoholics Anonymous have never enthusiastically responded to any assumption of personal authority. Perhaps it is well for AA that this is true. So I offer these suggestions neither as one man's dictum nor as a creed of any kind, but rather as a first attempt to portray that group ideal toward which we have assuredly been led by a higher power these 10 years past. P.S. To help free discussion, I would like to amplify the 12 points of tradition in future grapevine pieces. Mm. And we're going to go through those in the next few months. You know, he'll, he'll do a grapevine article per tradition. And we'll be covering those in the next few months. And we're, you know, we're going to dig deep into some of that stuff, Monty. Yeah, yeah, e- excellent, excellent. Um, was the grapevine ever considered conference-approved literature? All right. So this is what this is what I've heard about it, and you, and you have you have you have to understand that it's. You know, I, I've heard things through members, uh, and I believe them to be true. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can take it as gospel but this is what i've heard this is how it's been described to me because the aa grapevine is a periodical it does not have time to be conference approved Mm. in other words the articles come out on a monthly basis it takes sometimes years to get something conference approved gotcha has to go through committees and everything right yeah so so the grapevine as a periodical itself was approved by the conference. So the conference approved the publication of a monthly, uh, uh, a monthly magazine. Gotcha. But, but are, are the stories or the articles and everything conference approved? No. Makes sense. Makes total sense. And that doesn't, that doesn't make it any less uh, valid of, of a piece of literature. Um, Although I will say that, uh, as of the last several years, I haven't enjoyed it as much. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just I, say that. <laughs> you know, we don't we don't judge money. No, nah, we don't. Don't, mm. don't criticize, but uh, I haven't read it in twenty five years. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, have, I think it serves a purpose. I think it serves a purpose. They send do, them I into do. jails. You know, they send yeah. them all over the place, and maybe it's the first place someone identifies. Yeah, you, know, you never know. Uh, I've already identified. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, 
I'm all in. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't need, I, I I don't need help identifying anymore. I, you know, I need help with the recovery process. Right. And so, right. so you don't get, you don't get a whole lot of the recovery process in the grapevine. It's right. More, it's, right. It's, you know, it's more about identifying. Yeah. Um, this stuff's exciting for me. I, I, I just love it. Uh, yeah. It, it's, yeah. This was a, this was a good one. I'm, 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 uh, I'm grateful for, for this. Yeah, this is uh, this is powerful stuff. I, again, I, I think if this uh, particular episode, episode six, article six, uh, just proves once again to me uh, the value of the history and the material that is found within the pages uh, of the different pieces of literature that we have been blessed to to have in the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, yeah, this was a historic uh, article. And and I think uh, I you know even even Bill Wilson's haircut is coming back into style where you shave both sides of your head yes and and you leave the middle to yes. grow hair it it does I think, my, uh, my know, I I think it's all good money <laughs> my youngest son uh, uh, the uh, the worship pastor uh, Colin. He just got his hair cut just like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, I, I'm like, uh, things, things go around. Wow, they certainly do. All right. Um, great show. Next, uh, The next episode is entitled Safe Use of Money. Is there a safe use of money? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> right. that'll, that'll be great. Thank you, Chris, so much. Monty, it was fun. Absolutely. Folks, don't forget, we do have a dedicated webpage uh, for each of these episodes. Visit us at Take12Radio.com. Click on the Recovery Workshops banner. And when you go to that page, you will find uh, this workshop as well as others with Chris and myself and some others, too, as well. Um, You can always email us at Take12Radio at Comcast.net. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, you can download these always for fun and for free. Make copies of them, share them with your other friends in recovery. It's good stuff to know, to keep in your arsenal of just powerful stuff to help you enhance your recovery. All right, until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with the rest of the Take 12 Recovery Radio family, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. For more recovery workshops with Chris S. and the Monty Man, visit our website at Take12Radio.com and click on the Recovery Workshops banner. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 meow, meow, meow. Woof, woof. <laughs>